Last week we looked at the breastplate of righteousness and the sandals or the boots of peace. And we said that breastplate of righteousness is the armor that protects our conscience. And I think I spoke to you about the fall. What really happened at the fall was the awakening of man's conscience. When God told Adam not to eat of that tree, of the knowledge of the good and evil, it is our conscience that gives that knowledge of the good and evil. It is the conscience that lets us know what is good and what is evil. So that was what that was what was awoken when man fell. So the breastplate of righteousness is so important in waging that war against the wiles of the enemy, which I told you is Satan's strategy, is Satan's cunningness, is Satan's craft. And all of those things are targeted at the mind and the heart. That's why I said it, this battle that we are engaged in, which Paul described here as the battlefield of the mind. And your conscience plays a large role in fortifying you to win that, that battle. That's why you hear Paul always talk about having a clear conscience, having a good conscience. It is so important to winning the battle against the wiles of the enemy. Then we looked at the sandals. Shod yourself with that sandals, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And I pointed out to us that this sandal is not, is not all about the gospel. Alone is part of it. But it starts with the preparation. They showed your feet with the preparation. And I think that preparation talks about the eagerness to share the gospel of Christ, the willingness to share the gospel of Christ. So it is the attitude of evangelism. It is the attitude of reconciling men to God, being an ambassador and being an agent of the gospel. Preparation, preparation. Then I now said, what gospel are we supposed to preach? It is the gospel of peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So it is the gospel about Jesus and it's the gospel of what Jesus came on earth to do in his first advent, which is to bridge the wall between the Jews and the Gentile and announce to the world that God is now receiving and accepting everyone as his child, as his son, and as his daughter. But this sandal talks about the eagerness to preach that gospel. So we should not be slack. It is an armor. We should not be slack. No week should pass without us sharing the gospel with someone. No week should pass without us praying intensely for the salvation of people. We should have the attitude to preach the gospel and spread the God good news because it is an armor against the wiles of the enemy. A man that is actively engaged in the Great Commission will not have time or will not be exposed so much so to the wiles of the enemy because your mind is busy on how to share the gospel. You're always thinking about sharing the gospel. And you've, you've not opened yourself up to idleness. That is one of the way this is an armor. So today, we are going to the shield of faith. This is amazing. The word that was translated shield there is a variant from the Greek word that also describes a door. And this is so important because when you research the Roman soldiers' regalia, you will notice that their shield is really big. Like before the Romans came into power, the Greeks were in power. Now, when you look at the Greeks, the warriors, the Spartans, and the rest of them, their shield is very small and secular. The Roman soldier's shield is like a door. It's big and rectangular. It covers, they say it covers over two-thirds. It covers over two-thirds of 
the human body. That is the soldier. When they hold it up. That is why the Roman soldier had one of the battle formation and tactics called the tortoise. That's the infantry. Where the infantry soldiers huddle up and form a square. And this their shield plays a role in ensuring that that tortoise is formed properly. Because it is tall enough for them to it sort of crouch. When they crouch or they are one knee, this shield covers the entire body. So they form that tortoise in like a square. Then the soldiers in the middle of the square now put their own shield over them. This is a battle formation that counters any arrow. Aerial attack from the enemy. Assuming they want to bridge a city. And that city, they have their ashes on top of the walls firing arrows. This tortoise formation counters that arrow. And I thought that was very, very interesting. The shield of faith. That means protect and guard your mind. Protect and guard your soul with the door of faith. Today, when you have some money, you will put armor doors around your house as an extra protection. Like in church, uh, there have been a couple of break-ins into church because where church is situated is in a is in a deprived area in Manchester where our church is. So there'll be a lot of breaking into church, stealing our equipment, you know, possibly from drug addicts because there's a lot of drug activity and gang activity in that area. So recently we changed all the doors, not all, apart from the front door of the main church, which is over 100 years old, getting to 200 years old now. Apart from that one, the other doors leading into the, the church, we've changed them now to armor doors as an extra deterrent and protection. And this is what that shield of faith is. And he said in that place, say, with the shield of faith in verse 16, say, above all, taking up the shield of faith, say, with which you are able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. So this shield of faith is an extensive protection. Now, when we look at the armor of God, this shield of faith appears to be a defensive weapon. That is what it is primarily, but it doesn't end there. I did a series on the shield of faith, I think, uh, was it during, no, it was before COVID, on the shield of faith, before COVID. And there's something I pointed out. I said, though the shield of faith is supposed to protect you from the attack of the enemy, when you see seasoned soldiers fight, they can also use that shield of faith as an offensive weapon. So you see them with the sword, they clutch the sword, clutch the sword. Some of them you will now use their shield as a weapon, as like a javelin. You know, that edge is sharp. And they'll target the neck of the opponent. Though its major job is for protection, it can also serve as an offensive weapon. Just like the sword of the spirit. That is the beauty of the armor of God. It protects you. It also helps you engage in attack. And this shield of faith talks about faith in God. Faith in his word. And Bible let us know how this faith comes. This faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So one of the things you must do and make a lifestyle is faith. You don't remember faith whenever you need something from God. You don't wake up your faith whenever there is crisis around you. No, 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 no. no. That is the mistake a lot of Christians make. And they struggle with faith. I've had a lot of Christians come to me and say, Pastor, I'm not sure my, my faith is not working. I believe God for this, believe God for that, and it's not working. What usually happens to those Christians is that they awaken faith only when they need it. And that's not what Paul taught us. When you read Galatians chapter 3, Paul may declare the role of faith in the life of a believer. Before then, Habakkuk, the prophet, says the just shall live by faith. Paul quoted that scripture three times in Romans, Hebrews, 
and Galatians, I believe. Three times in his epistles, the just shall live by faith. By faith. What was he emphasizing? He was emphasizing that faith is for living. Faith is not for receiving only. It is for living. When I caught that revelation years ago, I started ingesting the word of faith every day. Every day. Listen to me. A soldier does not prepare for war during war time. A soldier prepares for war during peace time. I'll say that again. A soldier does not prepare for war during war time. A soldier prepares for war during peace time. That means when things are working for you, when life is good, when everything is smooth sailing, there's no problem. Satan has not remembered you. No attack from the enemy. That is when you prepare. In peace time, in just the word of faith. So I started taking the word of faith every day. And I'm going to recommend that to you. If you have a phone, you already have the tool. Go and download the podcast. If it's an Apple phone you use, download the Apple podcast. I think that it even comes, you know, as part of the apps when you buy an Apple phone. You have a Samsung phone, download as an Android phone, any kind of phone, other uh, phone, an Apple phone that use Android, download Google Podcasts, Spotify, download them, and pick, be selective. Don't listen to a lot of things that are not that will not build you up. I'm very selective in the people I listen to. Go and select men of God that speak faith, not men of God that tell cock and book story that speak faith, that teach you from the New Testament, especially. Especially. Men of God that preach a lot from the New Testament, no men of God that preach a lot from the Old Testament. There's a reason for that. Oh, I don't have time to, to talk about this. See, don't get me wrong. Every word of God, right, is the word of God. But would you rather read a letter written to your grandfather or would you rather spend time reading, reading the letter written directly to you? Yes, the letter written to your grandfather sort of affects you. No doubt. But there is a letter written directly to you, and that is the epistles. The epistles are letters written directly to the church. Until you understand the epistles, trust me, you will not fully understand the Old Testament. So let's advise young Christians. Focus on the pistols. Chew it, eat it, sleep it, drink it till it enters your blood vessels. That's your spiritual blood vessels. That's what I mean. Eat it till you have, you know, have serious koinonia with the pistols. When you are done studying the Old Testament, that's when you start understanding the Old Testament. If not, the Old Testament will just be stories. So focus on the New Testament. And God has made it so small. Though, though it is very small. That's a new, there's a pistol. It's very small, but it is condensed. So you can see how long it is taking us <laughs> to go through a chapter. Very small, but condensed. When we start looking at the New Testament, the Old Testament books, you will see that we will be blowing through it very fast. Unless, I'll chat, unless I teach it from the lens of the New Testament. But if you want to just teach it the way it is, you blow through it so fast. The Old Testament points to Jesus Christ. The epistles reveal Jesus Christ. I don't know if that makes sense. The Old Testament points to Jesus Christ. The epistles reveal Jesus Christ. So if you only spend time in the Old Testament, it will be, just, it will be stories to you until you uncover the person they are pointing to. Your faith gets built up in the epistles more than the Old Testament. Because the epistles reveals to you who you are now in Christ. Who you are in Christ. The Old Testament will not tell you that. And until you catch a revelation of who you are in Christ, you cannot live the way you ought to live. 
as a triumphant Christian. That is why one of the wiles of the enemy, which I mentioned last week, um, false and wrongly divided messages that come from the pulpit. Hallelujah. So why am I saying all of this? I saying all of this to say, please download a podcast app on your phone. Please, as you are driving to work, be listening to a faith-based message. You can be listening to me. Be listening to me in my podcast or you go to YouTube, watch all those things. Listen to a faith-based message. If you spend one hour commuting to and fro work, that is one hour of faith pumped into your system. As you are cooking in the kitchen, be playing it. Don't spend all your time on WhatsApp watching all those crazy videos that people keep sending and, and sharing. Spend hours in a day getting in the Word of God on your inside. What you don't know that you are doing is that you are preparing for war during peace time. You wouldn't know till war comes. When war comes, the way you react will shock you. I'm telling you. Because over time, during the time of peace, you have built up, built up faith on your inside. So the first that of the enemy I told you talks about, the Greek word there is peperomena. It's, it's like it's being set on fire. Because the fairy arrows of the enemy is talking about those auto-suggestive thoughts that set a fires into your mind. You feel a sharp pain all of a sudden. Let's say your chest area. Do you know what happens? Satan fires an arrow. Boom! Hey! Heart attack. Boom! Blood pressure. Boom! Fiery thoughts. You're about to die. You feel a sharp pain. Boom! Like, hey! He doesn't waste time. He fires it into your mind. Hey! That's how your father died. Boom! <laughs> This war is the war of the mind. The armor of God is the armor you need to clothe yourself with against those thoughts. They are fiery thoughts. Do you know what that happens? Anxiety comes. So that word, peperomena, also refers to anxiety, pressure, rush. At times, when they want you to make a bad decision, you will notice he'll start putting pressure, 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 pressure on you. Whenever there is pressure for you to make a decision, slow down. That is danger already. The Holy Ghost will not put you under pressure to make a decision. It is the enemy that tries to do that. So you, he will get you to make a bad decision before you can be rescued. That's the exact thing, the exact thing he also did to Eve. He mounted pressure, pressure, pressure on her to eat that fruit until she ate it. So these are some of the, you know, words that that fiery from the Greek means. It emphasizes the destructive nature of these attacks intended to inflict severe damage. But thank God, that the shield of faith protects us from them all. So the shield of faith is like a large door. It's like a security door. It's like a gate. Burglary proof. You ought to use to guard your heart. So when the Bible says guard your heart with all diligence, this is also what it's talking about. It's a door of faith that protects you from those thoughts. How do you know when you're walking in faith? There are three things or three ways you can easily know if you're walking in faith. Number one is that there is peace. No matter what is going on around you, Jesus in the middle of the storm was asleep. There is rest. There is peace. There is rest. Where? On your inside. Everything around you might be going topsy-turvy. But always check your inside. Is there peace? Is there rest? That's why this fiery dart is supposed to bring anxiety. 
What is the aim? To distort your peace. Because once there is peace and there is rest, faith works. In the midst of the storm, once you have these three things, peace, rest, and faith, that storm will be quelled when you speak the word to it. So the fairy that is supposed to bring anxiety. That's how Paul said, do not be anxious. Never get yourself to the place of anxiety. Do not be anxious. Say, be anxious for nothing. Always learn to be calm whenever there is crisis. But does it happen automatically? No. How you also know that you have started building up yourself. You have started putting on this armor that you've picked up and you've taken up the shield of faith. Is that when crisis comes, you are at rest. And one of the ways to get to that point in your Christian life is by ingesting faith. Paul said in Galatians, I didn't get to quote it when I mentioned it, chapter 2. He said, the life I now live. Talking about life after he got born again. Not life when he was persecuting Christians. Because after he encountered Christ, he got born again. He said, the life I now live, I live by the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. That faith that we have on our inside, if you're a Christian, is the faith of God. It is the faith Jesus introduced to his disciples in Mark 11, verse 22. He told them, have the faith of God. But they were unable to have it until they became born again. So when they became born again, that faith was given to them as a gift. It's called a gift of faith. It was given to them as a gift. So the faith you have now, if you're a Christian, is the faith of God. Paul said that in Romans chapter 12, verse 3. So you don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Why? God has given to every believer the measure, not a measure, the measure of faith. The word there, the, there, is a definite article. We're talking about the faith of God. We all have that faith. The life I now live, I live by the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have it in you. But how you strengthen it is by hearing and hearing the word of God. As you keep hearing the word of God, something is happening to your faith. It's being strengthened. It's being energized. So that in time of war, in crisis period, that faith secures your heart and your mind so that no matter the arrow, the enemy fires at your mind, it will not penetrate. Hallelujah. As I end this shield of faith, there are some things I want you to know about this shield of faith. Remember, you don't put on the shield of faith, you take it up. That's how you must go for it. You must study the word, you must listen to the word, you go for it, that's how you take it up. And this shield of faith does a lot of things. Number one, you must get to a point as you ingest the word of God, as you take time out to meditate on his word and having your private study, something happens. You must have the faith in God and the faith that he loves you. This is one faith you must have. When you catch a revelation that God truly, truly loves you, it secures your heart and mind. You know a child that knows that his father loves him, that his mother loves him. There is a security that that thing gives to that child's soul. There is a security that that thing gives to a child's mind. When you interface with a lot of people having mental health issues and you trace it down, sometimes it goes down to the fact that they came out from a family where there was no love. They didn't feel love. Nobody loved them. And that affected their mental health. It's the same thing with us. To be able to stand against the enemy when he's firing thoughts at you, you must have faith 
in the love of God for you. The faith in the love of God for you secures you. Even gives you that breastplate of righteousness. You just know that God loves you. You just know that there's nothing you do that God that will make God kick you out, abandon you, disown you. Mm -mm. Because while you are yet his enemy and yet in sin, he sent Jesus to die for you. That love is so deep. That's why I say, Paul says, see, get to a point where you know the length, the breadth, the width, and the depth of the love of God. The revelation of God's love gives you unusual faith. You know that you know that you know because of God's love, I cannot be sick. You know that you know that you know because of God's love, that pain goes. That thing you're trusting him for will come. That miracle you are believing for will come because he loves you. He will provide for you. Faith in the love of God is a shield that protects from the wiles of the enemy. When that tries to remind you of your past, to remind you of how an awful sinner you are, you smile at him and say, no, 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 no. All things have passed away. God loves me. He, I am accepted. <laughs> I've been adopted. I've been redeemed. He loves me. He gave his son because he loves me. He gave his son to die for me because of love. Be, have faith in his love for you. The next thing you need to have faith in is faith in God's faithfulness. He is a faithful God. Do you know what that means? It means that God will not fail. It means that God will keep his word. Anything he has said, anything he has promised you, he is faithful to do it. He is faithful to accomplish it. God is so faithful that he does not abandon a project. And if you have a project in his hands, he will never abandon you because of his faithfulness. Put your faith in the faithfulness of God. Stand. Don't give up. Don't shake. It is not over. See, you win because God is faithful. Faithful is he who has called you. Faithful is he who will complete it. Faithful is he who will perfect it. That gives you faith. That emboldens you with that shield of faith. So no matter what the enemy tells you, oh, God will not do it, God will not, oh, yeah, God will not do that. Whatever is whispering to your heart to make you sad, to make you downcast, smile and say, God is faithful. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will not pass away. You stand sure, holding that shield of faith. Word enough, every thought, negative thought, is firing like fiery darts into your heart. The third thing you must have faith in is in God's ability. You must have faith that God is able. He is the almighty God. Not only does he have all power, he is the source of all power. There's nothing too small. There's nothing too hard that he cannot do. His hand is not short that he will not save you. Faith in his ability. You know that you know that you know that he will come true for you. The Bible says that everything around us is temporal. <laughs> Say, for we look not at the things which are seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. A translation says that the things which are seen are subject to change. Listen to me. That crisis in your life is temporal. That challenge in your life is temporal. It is subject to change and it will change. Or if you believe that, type a big amen in the chat. It will change. Hallelujah. That challenge is temporal. It's for a short time. It will change. Though they say darkness, weeping, pain, Sickness, poverty, lack may endure for the night. Guess what? Nights don't last forever. The sun is coming out. God is able. The fourth thing I want you to have faith in, God is in his word and his promises. The Bible says, based on two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. His word and his covenant. Based on those two things, God will never lie. So whatever 
he has said in his word. Don't bank it. Hold it. Stand on it. Never give up. That's how you hold up your shield of faith. Put faith in his word. Put faith in that covenant he has with you. Put faith in his promises. And finally, have faith in his purpose and his will. Because all things are working together for your good. Hallelujah. <laughs> for your good. Working together for those that are called according to his purpose. Working together for those that are called according to his will. At times, curves that you meet in this journey of life is part of the deal. The valley of darkness is part of the deal. They are all working for your good. They are all working in accordance with his will and purpose. The Bible says, God said, say, say I know the thoughts that I think about you. Say, thoughts of good, not of evil, to give you a hope and a glory. I like the one that says to bring you to an expected end. Put faith in it. Know for sure you will end well. You will not end a failure. You will end well. 